Hi, I'm Sarish Sudhakaran, and in this video, I wanted to share with you a few books that I own that might benefit aspiring filmmakers. Now, most of these books have been written by the directors themselves, and uh, I have looked at books that offer inspiration, uh, show or reveal the motivation that uh, the directors had for picking the projects and doing certain things, and of course, uh, education when it comes to filmmaking. Now, these books uh, are just my opinion. They're not the, a definitive list. I'm not uh, the expert here. It's just what I own and what I recommend. Let's start with a book that's potentially dangerous if you are easily impressed and if you're a newcomer without any experience. I'm talking about Rebel Without a Crew by Robert Rodriguez. Now, it's definitely a motivational book. Uh, it's an inspirational book. It was for me as well when I started out. Uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to hear that all you needed was a little bit of money and you can go out and achieve your dreams? Now, that's great. There's a common misconception that uh, all you need is $7,000 or whatever the money is, uh, a cheap camera, a wheelchair, and shaky cam. Now, I'm sure that's not what Robert Rodriguez had in mind when he wrote the book, but that's uh, the kind of impression that some people might take from reading it. So that's why it's last on my list and I cannot recommend it completely. When I read uh, Rebel Without a Crew, uh, it was about 14 years ago when I started filmmaking. It was already a popular book and it was definitely inspirational to me at that time. But then over the years, I've seen him make movies, more and more movies, and you, I wanted to know where he would land up in his career. And today, looking at the stuff that he's made, I wouldn't say it's on par with the rest of the work in this list. So he really hasn't taken advantage. So in my eyes, looking back at it today, I would say Robert Rodriguez has won a lottery or won the lottery instead of actually making great works of art and earning his place among this list. But it's as a book, it's definitely inspirational. I absolutely recommend it. Just be careful you don't take the wrong idea from that book. Now, the second book on this list is uh, one that I haven't read, but I've ordered, and I should have it sometime by October. And that is Spike Lee's Gotta Have It by Spike Lee. Now, this is a book that uh, shows how Spike Lee made his first feature film, She's Gotta Have It, and how it became a success. It was a low-budget film that made a lot of money, and it also uh, got a lot of uh, critical acclaim, which helped him with his career. But I haven't read it yet, so I'll reserve judgment. Uh, please check back sometime in October, and I'll have an update for you at that time. Then there's a name above the title, an autobiography by Frank Capra. He directed It Happened One Night, It's a Wonderful Life, and so on. I haven't read this one yet as well. Then we have Magic Lantern by Ingmar Bergman. As soon as I'm done with Spike Lee's book, I'll be digging into this. So check back sometime by January next year, and I should have an update on that as well. The last honorable mention is a book I can't wait to get my hands on. This is Orson Welles by Orson Welles, Peter Bogdanovich, and Jonathan Rosenbaum. And I should have an update on this book sometime in March. Moving on to books I own, we have Akira Kurosawa and Something Like an Autobiography. And he wrote Something Like an Autobiography before he made most of his great films, uh, like Seven Samurai or Ikiru. You won't find any of that in here, but uh, this is just after he made Rashomon. The uh, thing is, you get to see his formative years because he was born in a wealthy family. He was a crybaby, and then he had a fall from grace. Uh, he became an artist, an assistant director, and finally a director. Um, another reason why this book is important is, for, for example, uh, years ago I wrote this article on Wolf Pro called Directors and the Number Eight, where I argued that the average filmmaker had to have eight tries or eight films before they made their first masterpiece. And this is a great example of that. Kurosawa is one director who made Rashomon. I think it was his eighth or ninth film, I'm not sure. But uh, we catch him at that moment. So he's become a director. He's an esteemed director in the Japanese film industry. And he just made Rashomon. And now he's got international fame and success. And he's just about to launch himself into Ikiru and Seven Samurai and Yojimbo and Sanjuro, Redbeard and whatever. I mean, you catch him at that moment. I wanted to read uh, a passage from this book. It's the absolute last passage in this book, just before the index. It's from an interview that he gave. 
I'm often asked why I don't pass on to young people what I've accomplished over the years. Actually, I would like very much to do so. 99% of those who worked as my assistant directors have now become directors in their own right. But I don't think any of them took the trouble to learn the most important things. So read this to know what the most important things are. And next, we have a director who was directly inspired by Akira Kurosawa. We're talking about Sergio Leone and something to do with death. Now, this uh, book is one of the books that on the list that have not been written by Sergio Leone. It's written by Christopher Frayling, and it's sort of an autobiography. It covers his life as well as his place in Italian cinema, how he is the father of spaghetti westerns, and how he changed or revived the genre. Now, there's great information in this book about uh, each of his movies and behind the scenes of how he operated, how Sergio Leone conducted himself on set. But if you have an idealized hero image of Sergio Leone, you might not want to read this book because after having read it, I've lost a lot of uh, respect for him as an individual. So he probably wasn't a very good person, but he was a great director and is definitely a great read. So that's uh, that. The next book is Sculpting in Time by Andrei Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky's made some great cinema over the years and this book takes you into his mind and inner workings of uh, what he thought about cinema, about art, what motivated him. You could see that he was very concerned, he was a deep thinker, he felt and he was honest uh, about the work that he wanted to make and he drove himself to get the results that he wanted. Next we have a book by Satyajit Ray, Speaking of Films. And uh, there are quite a few books uh, about and by Satyajit Ray out in the market, there are interviews, but this happens to be my favorite. It's concise, small, but it goes into his concept, his ideas about filmmaking, how he made movies like uh, the Apu Trilogy and uh, Charulata and so on and so forth. So if you're interested in uh, this great Indian cinema, uh, filmmaker, cinema. Next, I have an autobiography, Entirely Up to You, Darling, by Richard Attenborough. Now, this is an autobiography. It covers his life from uh, being an actor to being a director and producer, but its outstanding contribution for me is his account of how he made Gandhi. Now, if you're an Indian, you would know how difficult it would be for a foreigner to come into India and get permission and actually make a movie about Gandhi where a foreigner is playing Gandhi. It took many years of uh, sacrifice and patience to get the movie made. In addition to that, uh, the shoot was very arduous yeah, a great example of it is the scene where, which still holds the world record for the maximum number of extras used. So it was a very tough shoot for him. And even after all that, the movie is a great movie. It won a, a number of Academy Awards. You might want to hear his account of what happened at the after party after he won the Oscars. And uh, also interesting is how he cast Robert Downey Jr. as Chaplin. So it's definitely a great book in my opinion. So one thing I wanted to uh, point out is you look at uh, Rebel Without a Crew, for example, an account of how he made a movie and made it big with a little bit of money. And here's another completely different account of how you made this big, huge movie where uh, thousands of people had to approve on it first. So it's probably the worst nightmare uh, as a filmmaker. I mean, it's, it's going to be the most monumentally difficult movie ever made and still not only making it a commercial success, but making it a great film and then winning awards as well. So that's why, you know, if, if you had any doubts of why I placed Robert Rodriguez last is because you have people like Richard Attenborough, you know, to deal with. The next book on our list is probably the most popular and that's Hitchcock by Truffaut. This is a series of interviews that the director Francois Truffaut made with Hitchcock. And I don't have the book because I have the audio the audio is free. I'll link to it in uh, the article, so please check it out. But still, if you want uh, to refer to his notes, the book might be a better idea. Next, I have my absolute favorite filmmaking book, 
Making Movies by Sidney Lumet. I have mentioned this book many times before, so I don't have to go into detail about uh, this book. It is what a filmmaking book should be like. If a great filmmaker wants to make a filmmaking book for filmmakers, this is what how it should be written. There's a chapter on every subject imaginable from sound design to costumes, to lighting, to lenses, to uh, writing, to rehearsals, everything you need to know. There, there's so much information every time I read this book, and I've read it at least 50 times since I bought it, I don't know what, 15, 16 years ago. What's different about this book is that there's very little autobiography or life stories in this book. It's just about filmmaking. It's for the filmmakers. Now imagine Sidney Lumet, who's had a great career. He's retired. He has no, he has no motivation to write this book other than the will to help filmmakers because filmmakers form a very small niche in the world of cinema. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are more fans of Sidney Lumet than there are filmmaker fans of Sidney Lumet, but he's written this book for the filmmaker fans, and that's a great deal. I mean, it's so rare in our industry. How many of uh, these directors have written filmmaking books for us? Now, Making Movies is my favorite filmmaking book, but it's still only number two on this list. Number one is number one because it is sheer awesomeness. It's about a man who was uneducated, was poor, uh, he had stuff thrown at him while he was on stage. He slept with prostitutes. And yet, and still, he made it so huge based on sheer luck, sheer persistence. And we're talking about my autobiography, not mine, his, Charles Chaplin. If this doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. You know, I read a quote when I was young attributed to Thomas Alva Edison. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Charlie Chaplin is the proof. People online, especially youngsters today, are trained like guinea pigs. It's like you click a button and you know everything there is to know about filmmaking, about camera, information at the click of a button. Another click of the button and you can order stuff online. It will be delivered to your doorstep in 24 hours maybe sometimes. Then they expect, just like guinea pigs, because they've been trained, that it just takes another click of the button for health, wealth, and fame, and, you know, becoming great. It's just a click of a button away, and that's what this book will open your eyes to, because this guy didn't have mobile phones or phones even. He had to travel by ship from the UK to the US to make it big. It tells you what it really takes to become a great filmmaker, a great, you know, personality. It's not what you own or what you know. It's what you do that matters and how much you think. Because one common thread among all these directors is that they all had to work very hard to make their movies. They all had to have great life experience to understand how life is. They all had to be well-read. If you look at even uh, Charlie Chaplin, no money, but he spent money on books to read books. Now, the best example is Sergi Leone. People used to make fun of him, uh, still do maybe, uh, about his spaghetti western. They said, what, what can a guy from Italy know about America? He was, he was never in America in the first place. But he knew more about westerns, about American history. He researched and he knew more than the people he worked with. He impressed them with his knowledge. For example, there's a shot in Once Upon a Time in the West and uh, where they created a whole town which was accurate to that time and place. And it was just created for one shot. So Charlie Chaplin's book uh, will tell you what it really takes. It will show you. So if you're from the clickbait generation and uh, you haven't had your eyes opened yet, so this book will either be an epiphany or give you cardiac arrest or whatever. It might even, you know, you might even land in denial because you've been conditioned uh, to have things so easy nowadays that you might expect greatness is something you'll find in the supermarket. You know, somebody will always win a lottery every year and it's sufficient motivation for millions of people to play. It's just, okay, maybe I'll get lucky. I'll just throw in some money and make, make a movie and you can't disregard things like production values, talent, and uh, the kind of crew that you put together, the amount of 
introspection and work that needs to be written a good, good script. It takes a lot of work to write a script. Many of these directors wrote their own scripts and that should tell you a lot about uh, what inspired and motivated them. They didn't have mobile phones or Google to find information. Now, Charlie Chaplin didn't even have D.W. Griffith because they came up around the same time. So he had to make it up as he went along. And the rest of the directors on this list were inspired by people like Charles Chaplin, D.W. Griffith, John Ford, and so on and so forth. And we continue to be inspired by those before us. So obviously they had movies as their inspiration and a Charlie Chaplin exception because for him it was theater. But the other ins main inspiration for all of them have happened to be books in addition to life experience and hands-on filmmaking experience. So I hope I've inspired you to pick up some of these books and have a read and see if it motivates you, see if it educates you and helps you in your filmmaking journey. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe and hit the like button and check out my channel. There are more videos like this. Bye now.